implement the provisions of Mississippi law, House Bill number 1796, that uh, requires of us to redesign the flag. And uh, although it's just nine pages, it's a very simple document that tells us what we can and can't do. Um, it tells us that um, we have to put in God we trust on the flag, uh, that though <clears throat> no Confederate battle symbols should be present. And it tells us that uh, on November the 3rd, there'll be an election and the vote is either yes or no. So our job is straightforward and simple. Uh, at our last meeting, I mentioned that uh, generally I try to uh, keep meetings within an hour when I'm chairman. I'm going to waive that provision because uh, what we are about here today is, uh, as the Speaker of the House said, uh, we're fixing to do something that will probably last forever. And if that's the case, then we're going to take whatever time we need to take and pay ever whatever attention we need to pay to it. With that said, uh, we've got three new members of our commission, and uh, I'm going to start with Betsy and let us introduce ourselves and say a little bit about you, where you're from. Betsy? Betsy, I think you're going to need to turn on that device there. My glasses. <laughs> All right, thank y'all. Appreciate it. Uh, Betsy Hamilton, I'm from New Albany, Mississippi, in the northeast part of the state. And uh, I'm appointed as the representative from Department of Archives and History. I serve on the trustee, Board of Trustees. I'm also a founding member of the Union County Heritage Museum in New Albany and serve on the Commission for the Future of Northeast Mississippi. I do those presently. And uh, somebody asked me a while ago, what do I do? And I do anything that I can do. <laughs> so uh, it's really an honor to be here and look forward to working with everybody and uh, hope that we can find that one flag that unites us all and makes us all extremely proud to be Mississippians. Thank you, Betsy. Betsy can verify that uh the Mississippi Department of Archives and History is a great institution that's been around over a hundred years and uh, Katie and uh, her team are world class. Uh, ben, you're next, Chief. Halito from the Mississippi Band of Choctaw Indians, uh, the tribal chief of the Mississippi Band of Choctaw Indians located there in East Central Mississippi. If you go back in history, it occupied most of all of Mississippi, but now and just <laughs> Occupying a little over 35,000 acres there across East Central Mississippi, but I am grateful for the opportunity to join such distinguished group that will be making history and deciding a flag. And I uh, thank all of you all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chief. Frank? Um, I'm Frank Bordeaux from Gulfport, uh, from the coast, really. Uh, and uh, I'm in the insurance business with BXS Insurance. I currently serve as a board member on Harris County Development Commission, and I represent the Arts Commission. I uh, look forward to working with all y'all to come up with a uh, great design and a flag we can be proud of. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Frank. Uh, <clears throat> our leaders sure know how to pick good people. Uh, I tell you, if we had search committees and whatever, we couldn't come up with a better group of people to take on this major task. Thank you so much. Uh, next on our agenda is, uh, Introduce the let's, uh, let's do the minutes and then you take sure. over, Katie. Uh, your minutes are in your package. Uh, the minutes of our meeting of, um, when was it? Uh, last Tuesday. Last, <laughs> last Tuesday. I'll entertain a motion. Sorry. July 22nd. And a second, and all those in favor indicate aye. aye. Opposed, the same sign. I'm going to turn most of this meeting over to Katie. She knows her way around. Uh, she's going to introduce her staff, and then we'll uh, talk to some experts, and uh, we'll get this big challenge 
before us and taken care of. Katie? Thank you, Judge. I'm Katie Blunt. I'm director of the Mississippi Department of Archives and History, and the legislature has directed the department to play a clerical role in assisting the commission. Uh, last week at our first meeting, we were scrambling. Uh, I hope it wasn't too apparent. Um, it, was, it was a very short notice, and we were still assembling our team and, and assigning roles. And I wanted to today officially introduce the staff members who will be working with you. Robert Benson is our deputy director. Tyrone Porter is our IT director. Josh Watson and Kamisha Spann are on our IT staff. I want to just pause a second and say a little bit about our IT staff. It's the best one in state government. This has been incredibly complicated and uh, with a lot of time pressure figuring out how to present the flags to you, and uh, they're brilliant. Uh, Michael Morris, our PR director, sit back there. Uh, Emma McCraney, my assistant, who has been your contact person and will continue to be. Jeff Gambrone is a researcher, uh, one of our reference librarians, who has a, or a, partic a particular interest uh, in flags, knows a lot about flags. If y'all need any research done during this process, Jeff will handle it. And then we have oh, Brother Rogers, is our um, Director of Programs and Communication. And then we have two people on contract, Holly Lang, uh, who is coordinating the meetings and uh, figuring out the process that we're uh, going through to select the flags. And she's worked with us a lot, including on the opening of the museums. And then Dominique Pugh, who is a graphic artist, a uh, wonderful graphic artist who has worked with us uh, off and on for years. She will be available to help you if you wish to change any of the designs or design a flag yourself. And I'll talk more about that later. Did I leave out any MDAH? Oh, Eric Watkins in the control room. Yes, he's, he's working the, the stuff. Thank you, Tyrone. Um, okay, you want me to move on to the? Yes, okay. absolutely. All right, at our first meeting, uh, last week, uh, we presented a general framework uh, for how the work of the commission might proceed. And we had a lot of discussion and got a lot of really helpful input from uh, the commissioners. And so we have adapted that and, and kind of fleshed it out. And uh, in your packet, you have a revised uh, work plan for your consideration. Uh, the most important point that you made last week was that the commissioners, that y'all want to go through all of the flags yourselves, and y'all want to do the, go through the process of narrowing down the flags yourselves. So here is a process by which that could work uh, for your consideration. Uh, at, the, at the top is just a quick reference, just the dates and what will happen on those dates. Uh, and then let's go down to the detailed plan. <clears throat> August 1st, which is Saturday, is the deadline for the public to submit flags. We moved it up uh, to accommodate the process to print the ballots uh, in November, and we publicized that, it, that we, it was moved up. We've had about over a thousand submissions right now. Uh, so on August 1st, on Saturday, we will send y'all an email, and um, we will have created a secure web gallery uh, that includes all of the flags that have been submitted and that meet the criteria established by the legislature. No uh, Confederate emblem and the words in God we trust must be on the flag. All the flags that meet that will be in this secure web gallery. And we will send you an email on Saturday with a link. When you click that link, you will see what you see on the screens here, brief instructions You'll scroll down and you'll be prompted to log in and create a password. Uh, we'll send you an email with more instructions about that. Emma will be available to help you if, if you have any trouble with that process. Once you do that, you will scroll down and you will see the flags. These are just nautical flags. Uh, but you'll see the flags and you will, because you have a password and username, you will have the ability to vote on them. The way you do that is that you see the heart you click on the heart on the bottom left corner of a flag, and then you see the top right corner, it keeps a tally. 
we're proposing that you select 25 flags in the first round. So you can, as you go through, see what your number is and you can unlike them and go back and, um, and forth. And uh, the deadline for you to select your 25 flags to advance to the next round is August 7th. And so at midnight on August 7th, uh, that link expires. All the flags that you have selected, we'll put them all together and they will advance to round two. So it'll be 200 and some, uh, just depending how much overlap there is in your selections. As y'all are going through this process, we will also create a public web gallery that that anyone can link to. The link will be on the MDAH website. It will go live August 3rd and um, each round we will update the public link so that the public can see uh, what flags are under consideration. Uh, they can't vote. That's why you're, you have a username and password. There'll be a public comment period later, but, but they can see all the flags. Katie, before you go any further, uh do any of you commissioners have any issues or questions or concerns about what Katie just explained? I think it looks user friendly and the app is very good. Good. Well, we can change any part of it that you wish. Okay, so now we go to round two. Uh, on August 10th, we will send you an email announcing round two. And when you click the link to the gallery beginning August 10th, it will show all of the flags that y'all selected in round one. Um, your charge at that point is to rank your top 10 favorites from those and we'll send you an email explaining how to do that. You're just going to do it simply in an email uh, that you'll send back to Emma. Uh, <clears throat> at any point during round one or two, if you want to submit your own flag or you see a flag that you sort of like but you want to make some changes to it, the legislation allows for that. And that's why we have Dominique Pugh on, con on contract. Just contact me or Emma and we'll put you in touch with Dominique and she can do whatever you want. So and we that, see one and like, this, we want to move this here. Right, take this mockingbird out, okay. put a she magnolia can, in, right. She, okay. can, she can do that for you. And she can also, if the, the, fi the final flag is not, uh, say it was submitted on paper, she can create what is needed for the ballot. Yes, Betsy. They've, so, so a lot of them have come in electronically. Some of them have come in just on paper. We, we opened it wide so that, so that people could, you know, we've had people cut and paste and, and color and all kinds of, we've had children submit. And that's what we wanted. So, uh, so we are uh, creating a standard digital file for each one. <clears throat> Hey, Katie, quick yes. question. Um, so the commissioners don't really uh, follow the August 1st deadline. We can be in development phase throughout the process if we have a personal preference, correct? Right. Uh, it, it's up to y'all, but what we had proposed is that, um, is that through rounds one and two, you, you can design a flag. And the reason is that, um, is that we'll, we're trying to stay on track with the deadlines. Uh, so the next uh, round three then, so after y'all submit your top 10 to Emma, we'll score those top 10 submissions and 10, a total of 10 with the highest score, will move forward uh, to the next round plus whatever flags have been submitted by y'all. Um, and the next round will begin, we'll, uh, later in the meeting, we'll set the date. The original date was proposed as August 19th, and now we've proposed August 18th. We need to see if that works for everybody. But that will, early that week, we'll start round three. And whenever that meeting happens, round three will happen at that meeting, where you will consider the top ten, plus any that the commissioners have submitted, and you will uh, vote during that meeting to choose five of those. Those are the final five flags. Um, at that point, uh, we will have those flags, those top five produced as fabric flags for you to see. Uh, we can even fly them if you want. Um, 
and they'll go to the final round, which is August 25th. Uh, you'll meet to review the top five choices. On that date, we will also, we will put those top five choices on the MDAH website. And this will be an opportunity for public comment. We'll moderate it, our staff will be watching it the whole time and we'll vet comments and put them and post them, but this will be a chance for the public to uh, express their feelings about the top five. Uh, and that will last until September 2nd and y'all can watch that, it's public. You can watch the comments yourselves. Um, and then September 2nd is the proposed date of the final meeting uh, when the commission will meet to select one final flag and at that point the chairman will write a letter to the governor and the legislature uh, submitting that flag for the ballot. So that is the draft process. It is open for discussion and uh, we'll, we'll take up the dates in, in a minute but does the process meet the concerns you had at the last meeting? Does it seem workable? Uh, sounds great. Look like, uh, Katie, you've done this before. <laughs> well, we had, a, it, I, I, again, I can't say enough about our IT staff and, and Holly and Emma. We had a lot of people working on this and kind of figuring it out as we, as we go. Well, I know that you commissioners like me have received emails and comments, and I've forwarded all of my email comments to Katie. I, however, I've gotten text messages, and I don't know how to forward a text. So, uh, Katie, you got to walk me through we'll that, do, or, we'll take care of that or whatever. But are you all doing the same thing when people reach out to you? Are you forwarding your uh, correspondence on to Katie? Yes, sir. This afternoon. Yeah, I'll send some today. Okay. That's great. Okay. That's great. Thank you. All right, Katie, continue. Okay. Uh, do you want to ask for approval for the plan? I'm sorry? Do you want to ask for a vote on the Oh, plan? yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, the plan is before you, and I'll entertain a motion with regards to it. I'll make that motion. Then. Okay. I'll get a second. Second. All right. All in favor, indicate aye. <clears throat> Aye. Oppose the same sign. Okay, thank you. It's unanimous. Okay, mm -hmm. also uh, at the last meeting last week, y'all had requested um, to, that, that we arrange for you to have some guidance from a vexillologist, a flag specialist. And we have a flag specialist who has helped us for years uh, with our, the flags in our collection. We have a huge collection of flags that we're very proud of. Um, and so I am pleased to introduce to you Clay Moss. Clay will give a presentation of uh, 15 minutes or less, and then um, if you would like to ask him questions, you may do that. We will also um, be happy to put you in contact with him if you have more questions as you go through the process. Clay. Come on. Thank you. I don't get nervous about too many things. I can talk in front of people all day, but I'm terrified to read sometimes because I'm dyslexic. So if I stumble through what I'm about to do, it's not because I can't read intellectually, it's because I struggle to read physically sometimes. So please bear with me. Um, hello, everyone. I want to thank you for giving me some of your time today. I'm not here to advocate for any particular flag design. However, I am here to provide you with assistance at arriving at a good design. I was able to assist the city of Jackson in their competition for a city flag as well as the Mississippi flag referendum in 2001. Now I look forward to being a resource as you embark on this historic endeavor and it is weighty and historic indeed. I say that because uh, there have only been four major U.S. state flag changes in the past 66 years. <laughs> Georgia's done it three times and now it's Mississippi's turn. A good design will resonate in the people's hearts and create a sense of pride in Mississippi. And that being said, in considering a new flag design, everyone must remember that two-dimensional art often does not translate well into a fabric flag flying 40 feet over our heads or at a given distance. To that end, I have provided each of you with a copy of Good Flag, Bad Flag. I assume maybe you guys had an opportunity to, to look at that already. And if you don't mind, I'm going to repeat some of those simple design principles. Um, Rule number one is simplicity. A small child should be able to draw uh, the flag from memory. 
And a person should be able to easily sew it. Less is more, and any emblem on a flag should be equally simple and distinct. Rule two, strong symbolism. Any symbolism should relate to Mississippi in a historical and or meaningful way. Those symbols could be an actual symbol or merely reflected in the colors of the flag themselves. Okay, so that's good rule of thumb there. Two to three colors. An overabundance of colors erodes a flag's distinctiveness and may detract from its meaning. So we don't want too much color involved in the flag at all. Uh, rule four, no texts, seals, or coats of arms. The flag should, without lettering or seals, convey its message. For example, if you, have to write, if you have to actually write the word Mississippi on the flag, something went wrong with the design. Seals violate the first rule because they are very complex and indistinguishable, uh, particularly when flown outdoors, which is where they will be displayed most of the time. Uh, fifth rule, be uh, distinct or related. We want to either create a flag that's unique or one that demonstrates a strong relationship to Mississippi. State legislation requires uh, that rule four uh, has to be violated. However, a good, a good design can compensate for this mandate. Given this fact, it would appear that it's going to be important for us to, to consider a distinct design. Regardless of design, a Mississippi is a unique and deserves a distinctive design. Being a flag guy, I've heard from many folk who sincerely hope that Mississippi's flag will stand out among those of the other states while still being stately and traditional. I'm going to go ahead and begin my slideshow. If you guys want to look on either side here, um, one thing I was asked to do is talk about uh, good flag design strategy. I remember I sent you all one plate about some don'ts. But this is a do morning here. So here's some things that work really well. At the top of this first slide is the flag of the state of Texas. And just so you'll know, this is the best designed U.S. flag at the moment. It's simple. It's distinctive. If you guys have traveled much in Texas, you see it everywhere. And it's not because Texas is Texas and they're very proud of their history and their culture. It's because the flag is simple and it's easily reproducible in state. Uh, ladies and sewing machine shops can make it. Uh, if you have a simple sewing machine, you can make it so it's a lot easier for it to be seen in a lot more places. Immediately to the right there is the flag of Georgia prior to 1956. You see the state seal there. We've talked about that not being the most optimal emblem to put on a flag, but if it was chosen that we did it, you want to uh, consider putting emblems toward the hoist. The Lone Star flag in Texas, the flag is toward the hoist or the flagpole side of the flag. And uh, Georgia's state seal in 1955 was toward the hoist. It made it a lot easier to see under a lot more circumstances. Flags hanging limp uh, outside, you know, because there's no breeze blowing or an afford, uh, you know, a vertical pole indoors. You could see the Georgia seal more easily. You see the little flag I've got right above there. That was the Georgia flag from 1879 to 1904. And thus far, the best designed U.S. state flag in history. Maybe we'll get an opportunity to surpass that, but that's sort of your model. The next three flags on the second row, I've put those there intentionally because those have an American history. The uh, first one to the left is Wake Island, Puerto Rico in the middle. Uh, put the Philippines in. Some of you may know that's the flag of the Philippines, and I did that because at the time the Philippine flag was designed, it was a U.S. territory. So those are three American flags with the theme of your emblem being over in the hoist. And then below, uh, the island of St. Martin in the Caribbean, Mongolia, and then Mozambique um, to, your, uh, to your right there. Third row, these are all African flags as well, Zimbabwe, the former flag of Cape Verde and South Sudan. Um, by the way, I'm not trying to subliminally, sug subliminally suggest that we have a triangle hoist theme later. Those just happen to coincidentally be those flags that... Uh, uh, employee emblems toward the hoist side of the flag. And down at the very bottom, these are the two African flags, first from Guinea-Bissau and Ghana. Both flags are probably equally um, um, good in terms of uh, being well-designed flags, but the flag to the left of Guinea-Bissau has employed its star to the hoist side, making it a slightly better design. Um, another uh, way to look at the idea of offsetting emblems. The flag on the top is the flag of Colorado, and you'll notice that their C motif is, uh, again, all slightly offset. 
uh, to the hoist side of the flag. Again, uh, the, the strategy here is to be able to make sure your design is seen clearly. Also, in some cases, uh, certain flags, as they fly, um, uh, there's been cases where emblems appear to be too far to the fly side of the flag, which is the side away from the flagpole. And sometimes offsetting your emblem will allow a flag to, uh, an emblem to appear to be centered if that's uh, an outcome that you're looking for. The flag below is the uh, Portuguese royal flag from the 1830s. And again, uh, they have set their royal seal and their crown off center. I want to talk a little bit about a couple of flags I've actually seen already advertised as potential new state flags. And uh, I saw some anomalies with them that I wanted to address. The flag up top, um, you'll notice that you have a very thin bar on the fly side and on the, uh, on the hoist side. The red bar on the fly side is probably not an ideal uh, emblem to put on a flag because if this flag is flying outdoors, it's not going to take very long for that red, fly, that red bar to disappear entirely. And it's not going to be a part of the flag anymore. And so uh, I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit on that, more on that in a minute. But if you look at your emblem uh, flag below, those, flag, those stripes are horizontal. Now that flag is going to work a little bit better because even if the flag frays, the basic design of the flag is still intact. And it's a, 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 a better flag uh, design strategy, actually. Um, again, you may run into some flags with borders. And I think the same uh, point speaks for itself. The flag up top, that border is really skinny, meaning the fly-in is going to disappear in not very long, uh, you know, as flags fly outdoors. So if you were going to border a flag entirely, a heavier, a wider border is sort of ideal. The standard borders that I have found in flags around the world is about one-sixth the width of a flag. So I drew this in order to convey that. That's a one-sixth width border around that flag, and it does work um, very well in terms of uh, flags that are bordered because your fly end uh, uh, tends to last a little bit longer. All right, these last two flags here. Um, uh, the flag up top is the former flag of Yugoslavia. If you turn it over, it's the current flag of Holland. And then the flag below is uh, the flag of France. Um, without going into a lot of detail right now, I could communicate with you guys later. Horizontal striped flags are a better flag design strategy. It's been scientifically proven that the human eye can spot and identify a horizontally striped flag more quickly than a vertically striped flag. No disrespect intended toward France. The French love their flag, and if you go to France, you see them flown absolutely everywhere. But you might want to know that 50% of the world's flags are horizontally striped flags fully 50%, whereas 12% of the world's flags are vertically striped, which kind of gives you an idea that over time, as other people have designed their own flags, they've, they've figured this fact out. So I would strongly consider horizontally striped themes as they were to come your way, uh, and you are looking at flags. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, seven U.S. state flags are horizontally striped. One U.S. state flag is vertically striped. That would be the state of Iowa. And until Mississippi's flag was retired, there were eight horizontally striped U.S. state flags. So it's clearly a better thing to think about in terms of flag design. Uh, I was glad you made the comment, and I want you guys to be very open to this. You may very well find an emblem that you absolutely love. I'm not going to, it's not my job to advocate for any flags I've seen, but I was scrolling through a, a website the other day that a friend showed me, and I'm here to tell you uh, you're going to be very impressed with the number of flag designs that come through. At the same time, I've seen some flags whereby I wasn't necessarily impressed with the body of the flag itself, but I was very impressed with the emblem. At the same time, I've been very impressed with some flag backgrounds, but the emblems, I, you know, to me lacked. So it could very well be that you find an, an emblem that you think resonates and, and wants, you want to be on a flag combined with a flag background, and at the end of the day, if that flag ended up being the final contender, is what we would do is give dual credit uh, uh, for whoever designed the emblem and the flag. So, you know, in, in the history would say Mr. Smith and Mrs. Jones came together, don't even know each other, but they combined to end up with the state flag. So I would, uh, I would certainly want to encourage you guys that that's a, a, an excellent strategy to employ when coming up with a potential uh, new state flag. 
just as a matter of reference, the referendum flag uh, that was uh, uh, put up uh, against the state flag in 2001, I think eight people were going to be given credit for that flag. All right, I know one was a lady in her 90s and one was like a seven or eight year old child and a bunch of people in between. But basically, as the referendum committee was trying to come up with a, a design, uh, seven or eight people more or less came up with that same basic uh, uh, flag pattern and thus it was introduced. And, you know, the committee felt like they were, they were on to something there. At the end of the day, I want to encourage you to, to do this. Be uh, wide open to all possibilities, be amiable, and have fun. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm jealous. As, as a flag nerd, I, I, I can't think of a, of a better, better place to be right now in terms of uh, having an opportunity to, to present us with a, with a new flag. Do you guys have any questions? Yes, sir. So really a horizontal flag would fly well with the American flag, would it not? It would fly well with the American flag, and the American flag's horizontal stripes are, are an indicator of that. Absolutely it would. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I'm presently Yes, ma'am. Not necessarily. Twelve percent or vertical. It's been scientifically proven. That's a, that's a, that's a, another subject for another time. But it's been scientifically proven that the human eye will pick up a, a horizontally strike quicker than vertical. So I think people over the years have figured that out. Now a lot of the uh, U.S. state flags, of course, are are. Um, uh, <coughs> I want to be polite, mundane in terms of a recurring theme of state seal after state seal after state seal on, on a blue background or maybe a different color background. And we've talked about the fact that, that that's not an optimal design strategy. Now, we may end up there for whatever reason, but we, you know, as far as being distinctive, if we end up with stripes, I strongly encourage horizontal, absolutely. That's what I was saying, because they were fewer, I was thinking Yes, ma'am. No, not necessarily. <laughs> Thank you. Dr. Graham and uh, Maya, do you have any questions? I don't. I thank you, though, Clay, for that great presentation. That's very informative, and I'm excited about seeing all of the designs. It's I be have no questions, but Clay, will you be available if we happen to have a question? I will. Emma's got uh, my email address. And I think you all have already heard from me. And I've heard back, I think, from all of you relative to email addresses. And I'm a phone call away. Okay. Please, please feel free, free to call. And I will keep your phone number to myself. Your numbers will not be passed out to others. You know, Thank what you. What comes to me stays with me. I think TJ had a Thank question. You. Yeah, TJ, we've got one question here. TJ? Is there a preference on uh, solid color flags? Um, that you see solid blue, solid reds over vertical or horizontal? As far as solid color designs, as far as the human eye, uh, gold, yellow gold, and red are the most visible um, in terms of what the human eye sees. But I would, I would imagine that if we ended up with a solid color design, and I'm, again, I'm not advocating, I'm just saying in my head, I think it would be a, a white, blue, or red design because those are really our, those are our state colors. They really are when it comes down to, if you look at our flags historically, they contain red, white, or blue. I'm not saying that's what ought to happen in the future, but. I do have a question. I'm sorry. Clay, right on. Robin yeah. Tannehill. I, um, I know that one of the list of five things um, that are important is no text or seals or coat of arms and we've already discussed that our flag will have text do you have any advice on how to incorporate text the most effectively i think you're gonna i think you'll see some designs that that you'll be pleased with uh we were i was talking with a couple of other flag people recently about the idea of maybe wrapping uh in god we trust in a ribbon of some sort 
Um, you might go look at the flag of North Carolina later, how they've got a ribbon above and below their star, and it has dates and, and stuff in it. But right. that, that might be a design strategy. I've seen some folks put uh, In God We Trust in a, in a circle, and then an emblem in the middle of that. I think, I, I, to me, that was very attractive. And I'm not, I, I don't have a particular issue with the idea that uh, In God We Trust may be printed plainly on the flag in some uh, some stylistically okay. appropriate way. Florida, Georgia are the two that come to mind. I think those two. Yes, sir. That I'm aware of. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. And we have... Uh, the, we had copies last week of Good Flag, Bad Flag. We'll get those copies to y'all. It's also available online. Um, and we also invite you into our galleries. As I said, we have a huge flag collection, and we're proud of our flags, and, and we rotate them on exhibit in the History Museum. And, and you're welcome to go in there today and, and look at them. It is quite a remarkable collection. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I brag on Mississippi's flag collection everywhere I get to go. And one that's interesting is the 20 star flag that flew over the U.S. when Mississippi was admitted uh, to the Union, and that's upstairs. And we're, they're all upstairs. Um, they're all they're worth seeing. And then the other thing I wanted to mention is that um, Felder Rushing is here, and he is a proponent of the magnolia on the flag. He just has not submitted a specific design but he believes that the magnolia is a, uh, a good emblem for the flag, and he has given you all this brochure. We'll send the brochure to those of you who are not here, and uh, we appreciate Felder uh, being here, presenting that information. Thank you, Fielding. <coughs> Where we go from here, Thank Katie? Uh, meeting dates. Okay, you see the meeting dates before you on your agenda, and... Uh, Unless you have some unreadiness about it, I'll entertain a motion that those be our official meeting dates going forward. I have a problem. Uh, I had already put down. I guess, uh, I'd already put down the 19th for what we thought was going to be our meeting last time, and I uh, changed something to make it the 19th. But I'm unavailable totally on the 18th, and I think that's an important date because that's when we're going to pick the top five flags of the 25. Does anyway, the, we can go back to the 19th, or is that a problem? We, uh, that's a problem um, for Dr. Graham, but what about the 17th, the, which would be a Monday? Um, that pushes back. I tell you what we'll do, rather than sit here and try to resolve the date issue, let's go with the 25th and the 2nd, and we'll communicate with each commissioner, and we'll come up with a date that's satisfactory to you. I think we're going to need to move that one back earlier rather than later, because between the, the, that meeting that we're discussing the date and the, the 25th is when we have to um, manufacture the flags. We'll send you some um, possibilities. We'll work through the conflict on the 18th and 19th, and uh, we'll communicate with each of you, and we'll come up with a convenient date for everybody. And uh, let's confirm, and we've got to let's get a motion on the 25th and the 2nd and resolve those two dates. I'll make that motion that we reset the August 25th and the second. Okay. And we've got I'll a second. Okay. All those in favor indicate aye. Okay, if there's any opposition, express it. Thank you. Um, Katie? I think that's it. Whenever that date is set, as soon as it is set, we will post it uh, publicly. We thank the members of the media and the members of the public for being here uh, with us today. And, and th those of you who are watching on Facebook, uh, thank you for being here. That's okay. all I had. Uh, before we adjourn this meeting, uh, let me just express my appreciation to each of you commissioners. Uh, 
I'm the only person on the commission that doesn't have a full-time job, and I know it's heavy lifting for you all coming a long distance and paying attention to all of these 1,000 submissions, and we have a challenge before us, but I can assure you of one thing. We're going to design and approve a flag that Mississippi can be proud of. I'll entertain a motion that we adjourn. All right, all those in favor indicate aye. aye. Thank you again. <coughs> Thank you.